session in the, of the morning. How many of you guys are morning people, like love to get up early? A few, okay, yeah. the rest of us. Just nudge the people that didn't raise their hand if they fall asleep. So I might be one of them, who knows? Um, anyway, so uh, special thanks to Scott here. My computer decided not to work at all, so I'm using his laptop here, so thank you. Um, if anyone needs to know anything about WooCommerce, go talk to Scott, getting me a plug. So he knows what he's talking about, knows what he's doing. So um, cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and just share some uh, five steps today for publishing content that gets noticed. Uh, there's a lot of content that goes around the internet right now, and that happens to be one of the problems. There's two main factors that we're kind of fighting against right now in the world. Uh, we're getting a lot less visibility. Uh, earlier this year, actually, uh, Facebook made a huge change to their news feed, which almost like killed a bunch of people that did like organic marketing on Facebook in general. Uh, myself included, I, I had a lot of content I'd send out. I put a lot of time into it through one of my pages. And I went from getting decent exposure to getting zero organic reach. I remember like right after they made the change, I'm like, we'll see how bad it really is. So it wasn't just me sharing a link, it was me actually putting some time into, um, into sharing something that was really well thought out. And I went back the next day and it said it reached zero people. So that was after their change. Uh, most social platforms have kind of changed to that type of thing. Uh, they, they, they kind of the agenda, I guess you could say, that they have is to keep you on their platform. So anytime you share a link that's going to take people away from it, it's going to get a lot less visibility in today's world without you paying to share it more. So that's one of our big factors we're kind of fighting against right now. Um, the other one is increased number of publications. So uh, WordPress, at the end of the year, uh, 2017, WordPress.com uh, announced that they had 2,000 blog posts go live every minute. So every one minute, that's, and that's just on WordPress.com, so not all WordPress.org users and uh, people that are using other platforms aside from WordPress, it's not including any of those. So it's kind of crazy to think about, right, that there's actually thousands of blog posts happening every minute. So when you hit submit or you hit a publish on your article, there's also 1,999 people doing the same thing. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of competition that's out there. Um, thankfully, though, there is a solution to this. There's something that we can all do, and that's kind of what I'm wanting to share today. Uh, the first thing is creating an irresistible call to action, and we're going to get deep into these things in a little bit here. Um, but basically, it's going to be this is what's going to drive more traffic. So it's kind of developing a way that you know what here's my my call to action, which is going to be your title, your featured image, and your meta description. Having those things really solid are going to be what help you to be able to uh, stand out among those other 2,000 posts that are happening at the same time. It's what will get you a click for somebody else, um, and also just pub publishing excellence. Um, when you're writing an article, it's really uh, uh, the quantity of articles you put out is important, but what's more important is something that's really quality. You got to make sure you put a lot of time and energy into it. That it's something that people, when they read it, they decide, you know what, I, I want to read more from this person. Um, I know for me personally, there's a couple uh, places that I actually follow, and I love to read their everything they publish because I've read two or three things on there that were just so, so well done, so well thought out. I'm like like loyal to these people now because I'm like, man, they, they really put a lot of energy into this. So for me, that's been a good thing. So that's kind of our, our solution here. Um, so all my examples today um, that I have throughout the rest of this are going to come from uh, one of my projects, dailyps.com. The PS stands for Paradigm Shift. Um, we share positivity in the world. That's It's a multi-author blog. We've got 70 plus author authors on it. Um, we just hit over 1,000 uh, original articles to the website. Uh, and we got ranked on a uh, top 100 website, uh, one of the most well-known for being a top 100 Christian blog, which is a huge honor. We're pretty low on that list, um, I will say that. Uh, but it's just cool to be on the same list as people like the Christian Post, Christianity Today, Relevant Magazine. I thought that that was really awesome to be able to, to be on that same list. It's honestly a huge honor for all of us that write on it. So I really in, enjoy just writing in this way. So for us, we're just there to share faith, love, positivity with people, anything that leads people closer to Jesus, because we believe that's the solution in today's really negative world. So that's what we're all about. So any example you see today that I share is going to actually come from that platform. And also, real quick, before I move on, if anybody has any questions throughout this, please raise your hand. The last thing I want is for you to have a question in five minute five of this talk, and you wait till 45 minutes later to ask a question. Um, I love to answer questions along the way. So anything that you guys are wondering or want me to comment on, uh, don't feel like it's going to be a question that I'm not going to answer. If it's a uh, question that's take me more than just a second to answer, though, I will. We'll, we'll talk afterwards. So, everyone good? Cool. All right. And half, half the room here is awake, right? So that's, that's great. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about here is actually the, uh, our website. I'm going to go through this pretty quick because that's not really the, the main part of the talk, the, the talk we're going to do here. But um, it is very important to talk about. You're at a WordPress event, so you're going to talk about 
websites. So um, there's kind of four main areas that affect your website traffic um, from if you're going to be able to, to get more traffic or not. Um, the first of those is your speed. Uh, quick load times are extremely important um, for bloggers, for anyone who has a website. Uh, if your website loads in more than three seconds, it takes more than three seconds for it to load, you're going to lose uh, quite a bit of traffic. It's, up to it's over 50% now. Somebody actually had the stat yesterday in their talk. I'm not, not sure which one it was. I attended a lot of them, which uh, I remember being awesome. I was like, man, that's, that's crazy. Over three seconds, you're losing people. So um, it's a lot to ask someone to wait more than three seconds for you, isn't it? So um, people aren't, aren't really going to wait that long. And a great website I like to check speed on is tools.pingdom.com. Uh, and you can go there, there's a ton of places to check website speed, that's just one that I really like. I like the way that it kind of spits out the information. So this is actually a real example of dailyps.com. Um, it loads in less than one second, as you can see kind of in the middle here, which for us that's great. Um, don't pay too much attention to performance grade. Uh, I always ask my host, I'm like, why is my performance grade a C? You know, I used to always ask them, like, why is it not great? Uh, and truthfully, you go to any, you get that up to an A on this website and says your website's great, you go to another speed testing website and they'll give you a D. Just because it's not format they would want to. Really, if your website's running quick um, and it doesn't have any like major flags, like it's saying, like, it, it's, if it says it's really bad, then maybe you should check it out. But a C is a good grade for us. We're loading as quick as we want to. The page size is down. So we were really happy with that. So web, website speed is very important for you to consider. The next one is your navigation. Um, I do a lot of reading on WordPress.com. So I'll actually go over to the WordPress.com website, just do random searches for things I may want to read. And when I go to actually read the content, I don't use the WordPress native reader. I actually go directly to these people's website. So I can get a, kind of an idea, some inspiration for what they're doing. Um, the most common issue I see is people don't have their website navigation on every page. So I click on a blog post and there's no navigation. So I finish reading it. There's no real place for me to go. I always have to click the logo. It takes me back to the home page where I can find navigation. You want to make sure your navigation is on every page, on every post. It's everywhere for people to see. So for us, this if you scroll down uh, on our website anywhere, um, that navigation will follow you. It's the same on every page. It's got all of our categories. It's got all of our pages. There's not any other pages that are hidden that you're not seeing right there. We've got everything visible. So it's a really important thing to do. Just check your, your blogs, your websites, make sure that you've got that navigation really uh, kind of in a way that everyone can find it and see it really easily. Uh, next is our static content. Um, this is kind of like a pet peeve of mine here. Um, also on WordPress.com, I'll we'll go find a blog post. It's great. Sometimes I really get inspired by it. I love it. I want to see a little bit more about the author. This was a real example of that. It was a good article. I scroll down the bottom. It was by the Washington Post. Um, this wasn't the Washington Post website. I don't know what this website was, but that's not what it was. There was no bio, there was no image, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to go find the about page. Couldn't find the navigation, finally ended up finding it back on the home page, and went to their about page. And it said, this is an example of a WordPress page. Um, that's not a real about page. And <laughs> that is the most common one I find on websites. I'm like, oh great, so there's not even any information about who this person is on the post, and the company itself, or the website itself, doesn't have any information either. Um, take the time and make the effort to really narrow, like get your about page done really nice and put your author bio. If you don't want to put a picture of yourself, it's still great to have some sort of picture, not just this, uh, this person here that uh, is on most people's websites. Um, so next part here, and this is kind of the last part of the, the website, and then we'll get more into the actual content itself, uh, mobile readiness. So more than 50% of uh, searches are now done on mobile devices, which means people are reading your content on a mobile device. It's important for you to know what it looks like. So again, I'm using Scott's computer. This was actually a video that was moving, but it is what it is, so it's all good. This was just an example of what Daily PS looks like on a mobile device. It looks exactly the same. Um, the content's easy to read. The last thing you want for somebody to do is when they go to your website, they have to be scrolling left and right to, find the, to read the content. You want to be able to format properly and be uh, optimized, basically, for mobile use, because um, that's kind of going to be the future of this. So, you can test this in a pretty easy way now. I actually just found this when I was making this presentation. If you just Google mobile friendly, right under the, uh, the search bar, Google will just pop up with a, you can type it in right there on their search result page. So you don't even go into another website. And then it'll tell you if it's mobile friendly. Um, and that's Google's official tool. If Google says it's mobile friendly, I'm gonna go ahead and trust that it is. And they had a submit to Google button. They didn't explain what that meant, but I'm, I'm guessing it means they crawled your website, you can upload it, and somehow submit it to Google saying that you do have a mobile-friendly website. Um, so that was an easy way to do that. Again, you just Google mobile-friendly, you'll be able to find that. 
Can I say something really quick? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. The whole thing about Google and it being mobile friendly is so crucial. My friend was making over $10,000 a month on her website, the one website, plus some, a couple thousand on another website. She didn't have it mobile ready in time for Google. She's down to like one to 2000 a month. Oh my gosh. So she's, yeah, she's literally had to go find another job until she gets it fixed. Oh wow. So. Well, there's a great lesson for everybody Thanks. right there, right? Yeah. That didn't happen to all of us, but my goodness, that's... <coughs> Um, all right, cool. So we're going to get into this next part. Does anyone have any questions so far? Cool. All right, I'm going to keep on going. So we're going to get, actually get into uh, publishing content that gets noticed now and kind of go through the five steps here that I, I believe are very important for all of us. Um, so the first one is actually our, the draft of our content is very important. Um, so it's all going to start with an idea, which is going to really spark your inspiration. And so when I say that, the first thing you want to do is if you have an idea of some sort or something you know you want to write about, don't trust yourself and say, I'll remember that later and I'll write it down later. Um, go ahead and pull out a notepad there. Or for me, I have a notepad on my phone that's strictly for ideas I get of writing. I'll be like mid-conversation tell someone to hold on a minute and I'll like write it down because for me, I know, I, try, I know like my limits. <laughs> if I wait 10 minutes, I'm not going to remember what my great idea was. So write it down as soon as you, you have the idea. And also, for just writing in general, I encourage you to set aside time, actually schedule it to, to write your content. Because that's extremely important to be able to, to not just do it whenever you have time, but set some time, block it off in your calendar. Um, for me, I have a time every week that is reserved for writing. I protect that time with everything that I can. I make sure that I'm intentional about that. And that's where I go to the ideas folder and I start actually um, writing some of it out. So it's important along with that to find the atmosphere um, that works well for you. Um, and don't think about the atmosphere when you're, you know, you schedule the time, you're like, all right, where am I going to go today? And what am I going to listen to is important as well. For me, again, that time it's scheduled in that calendar event on my calendar, I have the location and I know exactly what I'm going to listen to. I have a few pre-made playlists that are ready to go that are just good for me to write to. Um, so I'm not like browsing around YouTube and stuff for the first 20 minutes of my reserved writing time. So that's a really important thing to do. Um, and then also... Uh, anyone here type A personality, like super little OCD maybe? Anybody? There's a few of us. All right. So for me, I have that desire to edit as I go along. I want to like edit, like I write a sentence, I'm like, oh, that wasn't very good. I want to go back and like edit it, fix it up, and then I want to put like some bold text here, put some bullet points there, and things like that. Uh, don't do that while you're writing your initial draft. Um, the thing is, if you're like really in an inspired mode and you're writing really well, uh, doing that's going to kind of throw that off. Fight that desire. I'm probably only talking to a few people right now. The rest of you guys are like, no, that's easy. But uh, for me, that's always been a struggle. So I encourage you guys, make sure that you're, you're really uh, saving that for an edit, which is a later part of what I'm going to talk about. Um, and then ask yourself, this is an important question to ask this last part, is does it add value to people's lives or does it fix a problem? That's a really important thing to, to ask. What, what is, what is the, the point of what you're writing? Like, what is it going to do for the world? What is it going to do for somebody else? Um, that's a, just a really important thing for us to, uh, to ask and to remember. Um, so this next part is, uh, this is a fun part of the, the conversation here. So your title and meta description. Um, they're both, they're extremely important. They're both vital to the success of your blog post. It's what's going to get you extra clicks. So, if somebody saw those 2,000 WordPress blog posts all in one screen, this is what's going to determine whether they click on yours or on somebody else's. If they didn't look at what it was about or anything, just what's going to get you to click what's not. Um, so you don't want to mislead anybody with a title. I know I've seen some people that made some like really awesome titles, um, but it has nothing to do with the content. It's just a title that's going to get a click. Um, if people can't trust you, because that's going to that's going to create some distrust in people's mind if it had nothing to do with it, they're probably not going to come back and read any more of your content. So you want to make sure it has to do with the content that you're writing. Um, along with that, this was a funny story. Again, WordPress.com. I like searching around there a lot, and um, so I was looking for a certain blog post on a pretty specific title or a uh, specific uh, topic and I clicked on one and I, I saw a title and it literally said, I might be messing up a little bit here, but it said something along the lines of, I don't want to write titles, I just want to write my content, can somebody please help me? And I thought it was hilarious, I was like, that's great, so I'm like, I'm going to click on that because I know it's going to be about like writing content and getting good titles. It had nothing to do with titles at all. They never even referenced like the weird title they made. It was actually like a well thought out post about like the topic I was looking for. They just legitimately didn't want to write the title. Um, it was a terrible cop out, you know? Like I wanted a message to be like, hey, great content. Why didn't you make a title that worked with it of some sort? So um, it's important. Um, I, was, I felt misled, by the way. That was not what I was expecting. So, um, so the, the next thing is like when you're, when you're actually thinking about a title, it's a bit of a 
gift or an art form, I could almost say. It's not always easy. Um, there's an ebook I actually got from a, a very big uh, company, and they gave me permission to send it out to everybody. So at the end of this, uh, along with the slides, I'll have a link where you can download that ebook for free. Um, it is the best resource I've ever read on creating titles. I reference it all the time. I'm having like lack of creativity. If I just can't find anything creative to write, I'll go there and just kind of read through some of like the most popular ones that have ever been shared or some good strategies for doing it. It's awesome. So I encourage you guys to get that. You can get that at the end of this. Like I said, I'll have a link for it. Um, and it's just, it's a good call to action. I give you a good idea for how to do that. Um, so, and then the meta description, um, this is like something that might be foreign to, to some people. Uh, meta description is basically when you go to Google, you'll see the title and then right under it. It's that sentence that comes up right under it. Um, the easiest way to make one of those is to get an SEO plugin. I recommend SEO Yoast is what I use. And right under your content, there's a section where you can actually write your meta description. So that's SEO Yoast. And um, you, they actually give you a section for that. If you wanted to like hard code it, I, I guess you can. Um, I wouldn't recommend that, it's a lot more work. Yoast makes it really simple and it's a free plugin. Um, it helps you with SEO and to be able to do things like that. So, and when you're thinking of your meta description, think of it as an engaging preview. So, what's a popular movie that's coming out soon? I'm not like a huge movie guy. Oh, uh, Avengers. Thank you. That's what I say. <laughs> Infinity War, right? Who, who said that? You were psyched about it. I saw it. Um, so, cool looking movie, right? You see that title come up on TV. Everyone, you're gonna get quiet. You want to watch the preview. What if the preview was just the first 45 seconds of the movie? Kind of like. You know, you're like, all right, well, I'm not really getting anything here. And then when you go see the movie, you're like, all right, I've already seen this. Um, a lot of us have that desire to do that with our meta description. We just make it the first few sentences of our post. Um, the problem with that is somebody reads it, even if they feel a little bit engaged and go to it, they're reading that same copy again in your actual post. Think of it as a movie preview where you're actually putting some highlights in. You're not giving everything away, just enough to get people excited to read it. Um, so kind of think of it that way. That's what it's about. It shouldn't be anything that's in your post. Um, if you're really stressed for time, I understand I've done it before. I'm like, well, I'm just going to pull this part of the post. It's great. Um, but if you have the extra time, you can put in the extra effort, make it something that's going to be really engaging and encourage people to like to draw them in to want to see a little bit more. Um, and like I said, yes, yeah, so don't use that first paragraph. Any questions so far? <coughs> cool. All right. So this is an example of a great title. This was shared 67,000 times on Facebook alone. It says, 70% of Facebook users only read headlines of science stories before commenting. Um, super interesting, 67,000 shares. I went to go read the post. Um, the first paragraph was just kind of references, shared a little bit about it. The rest of it was actually just that weird pig Latin. I don't even know if that's really what it is. How do you all say it? I wouldn't even try. It was way off. I was thinking if I was actually going to say that. I'm glad I did. Way off. But that's all it was. So I read the content. It actually was. It was just. It didn't make any sense. It didn't even have like real words in it. So it was like this long post with only one line that actually had real text. It got shared 67,000 times, which proves people didn't read it. They just went ahead and shared it because it sounded like a great title, right? Well, um, it, it might have been a funny. joke. It's like yeah. they only read the title yeah. before right. commenting. Yeah. So it's like title, some filler text. Yep. Lorem Ipsum is known for its taking up space. Yeah. And then comments. Oh, okay. That's it. So, yeah, Lorem Ipsum. Pretty, pretty funny though, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's the title? So I think they purposely put the Lorem Ipsum. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Reinforce, like, you're not going to read this article. Read it. Yep. Title, yeah. comment. Yeah. Lorem Ipsum, yeah. the actual article itself is just filler. Yep. You don't care about that. So I don't recommend writing articles that are just filler. Like, you need to put a great title. Like, Let's not try this. It's not I don't, really writing. It's okay. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. If anyone becomes like a, like a you know, published author because of it, let me know. I'd love to hear that success story. Um, so here, this was pretty cool. I got this off of HubSpot, actually. This is the most shared um, titles on Facebook. Uh, and it's crazy to see that most of them start with will make you or have that somewhere in it. So that's kind of like a, uh, something that's like maybe three things that will make you more money somehow or you know, three things to help you uh, sleep better or anything like that. That's kind of like the most shared thing. So again, I'll have these slides. So I don't feel like I get to write all these things down. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting to see what, what people were sharing the most of. Google is a great resource to be able to see that, especially before just a couple months ago when they made their huge change. Um, it's, it's a good way to see it's like half the internet is using it or something like that. So it's cool to see what's getting shared the most on there and things like that. It's a great way to, to figure out what kind of titles you want to write. Yes? There's a great book by Anne Handley called Everybody Writes, and she's got a couple pages where she's just so showing those top ways to start titles. Oh, really? It's pretty cool, like 16 ways to, or the worst thing, or all of those that are catchy, which are okay to use as long as it is relevant. Mm -hmm. in the end, so. And that, that, what you Another just said there is so important. That's what's, it's got to be relevant. 
So you can't just try to fit one of these in because it's going to get you more views. It's got to actually work with the content. I'd love to actually talk to you after and find out what that. I need. To, I usually write things down. I'm not going to right now, but I'll talk to you after and get that book. Um, but yeah, so this is one of my formatting issues. Engagement kind of disappeared under there. Um, anyway, so again, it's got to be relevant, but this is like a good resource to be able to see. Um, cool. So featured image is the next part. So uh, your image is what is the first thing that's going to catch somebody's eye. You've got to make sure you have a featured image on uh, on any of your content that you're going to be writing. It's extremely important to have that there for people to be able to see. Uh, people will mindlessly scroll. You know how it goes. Instagram people are scrolling so fast. They only stop when they see something that piques their interest. So you've got to be able to find something, some sort of image that's going to pique that interest to get people to stop. And that's when the headline comes into play. So this is kind of like your first defense to see if you can get someone to even slow down in the, the fast, crazy world right of just scrolling through things. Um, so you want to make sure, again, just like we've been talking about, I'm always going to say this, it's got to add value to your content. Everything we do has got to add value to the content. You cannot mislead people. So you want to make sure your image is really well, fits well with what you have. Um, it requires a little bit of creativity, but there's, you know, we can all do it if we put a little bit of effort into it. Um, or you can always recruit somebody to help you out with that. Um, so it, the images that are actually um, converting the highest to clicks are images with a few words in them, or images that are like close up of a face. So I don't the words one I've never used that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of words in uh, in pictures, but it's like usually a really pretty picture with just like a few words that go with the the topic really well. Seem to people click that a lot and it works well. Um, the other one is actually uh, faces, which I find more interesting. I end up using a lot of uh, close-up of faces in my in my post. Now, I will say this: if it's your own face and people you know are who's reading it, they're going to click it um, probably automatically because I see somebody they know in it. But even using somebody you don't know is, is a pretty cool way to do it. So each of us, this is kind of a cool thing just about uh, uh, the human race in general, I guess. We're all programmed to look at other faces, um, whether you do this consciously or subconsciously. When you're scrolling through things on on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere social, if there's a close up of a face, you subconsciously stop whether you realize it or not because you see another a human face and it, it, it drives that inside of us somehow. We're hardwired that way to be able to slow down and stop. So that's one of the reasons they actually convert way better is because you see a close up of a face, even if it's not someone you know, you're gonna slow down. Um, so that's kind of an interesting way to, to be able to look at an image. Um, and then just make sure that the images you're using are high quality. I think a lot of us want to use our own images we've taken, which is fine if they're really good quality and they go well with the post. Um, I had one author writing for me a while ago, and um, he's kind of changed since then, but he, he was a photographer, so self-proclaimed photographer, I don't know what to call it, but he, he liked taking his own pictures. Um, he had a picture, and it was something about like, uh, you know, have something to do with like faith in general, he has like a picture of a boat that he took. And it's a nice picture, but there was nothing referenced about a boat in the whole in the whole uh, copy, nothing at all. So I'm like, man, that was like, it's a cool picture. Like you took it, I get it, but it has nothing to do with this. You can't just use a cool picture because it's a cool picture. It's got to be high quality. It's got to go well with the post. I'm sure, it didn't say CLI. No, <laughs> no. Um, so before uploading a picture, this is kind of like a little SEO tip here. Um, rename it. Uh, images, especially off of cameras, they come out with a very generic. Uh, title, you want to go ahead and name it what the title of your um, actual copy is or something to do with it. Um, and then after you upload it, you want to utilize the, the title and the description, alt text, all that. Um, it's good for a, a lot of reasons, I'm not going to get into, but if you rename an image before you upload it, it actually will rank higher in Google, um, which means if people are looking at Google images um, for a certain topic that goes with that image, they might come to your blog post or your website through that avenue as well. Um, I had one post that did really well with that. I used um, an image on it that was a really cool image, um, and it, it fit really well, and it's not something that's searched a whole lot, but almost, I get half the clicks come from Google Images instead of actually from the web, which is pretty interesting. <coughs> um, and there's three, I, I, there's a bunch of websites you can get free stock images, because I know what everyone's probably, a lot of you guys are thinking is like, where on earth do I get a good image from if I'm not taking it? Um, three places to get really good, uh, high quality stock images that are free to use are unsplash.com, Pexels.com and Pixabay.com. I've got those three references up here. Um, you can use those images. Um, the people that are those photographers, I always recommend like if you're going to use a lot of their images, like donate something to them. They have like little links to like buy me a coffee and stuff like that. Like give back because they they give they freely give all these great images away to anybody. And I I almost exclusively use Unsplash right now just because it's it's awesome, super inspiring, cool images. So, any questions on that? Yes. Um, how. How do you choose to name your images that you get those Google image hits? So, for example, would it be three or four words similar to your title? Would it be something catchy? You know, I'm not really sure the right way to do that. I I use usually my entire title in it. 
um, or at least piece of it. Yes. Um, do you credit the photographer um, when you when you embed an image? No, uh, not not on these. Um, if you read their policy, they don't require that. Um, it's nice to do. Um, unfortunately, the theme I'm using right now doesn't play well with that. Um, so I have not, uh, but we always give credit back to to those websites for that's where we're getting our our images. So, and we they a lot of them have trademarking built into it, and we're not changing that type of thing. So actually, in the the description and things of the image. So, um, all right, it's one of those you can, but you don't have to. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think what they like better is when you buy them a coffee. You know, I think, I think that's their preference. So. <coughs> All right, so these are four. I'm going to give you a couple examples of actual posts that I've done on, on Daily DS again. Um, this is kind of like this first one here. I used a list and I used a image that like kind of screams friendship. So one of our most popular tags we use is, is friendship. They always get like a huge spike in views. It's important to know like what actually is converting for you. So I knew writing about friendship was going to help, um, and people love lists for four secrets. Who doesn't want to know four secrets? Uh, developing stronger friendships. Um, this picture, I really liked it because I was scrolling through Unsplash and saw this one, and I recognized two of the people in it. I don't know them. They just look like two people that I know. So I kind of was hoping that someone else would feel the same way. You know, they would see this and be like, oh my gosh, I might know these people. So um, this, this post did extremely well, um, and it was just like a good title with a good image, and the actual description of it worked well with it. The meta description worked well with it as well, uh, along with it. Um, I wanted the controversial post as well. Um, the problem with Christians in America. We're a Christian blog. Um, that you know immediately sends up a red flag for everyone who's on there. Like, what do you mean the problem with us? Like, what, what are you talking about? Um, and then the image goes well with it because I it's talking about America. I didn't use a real bright color image that looked like really happy and fun. I used something a little more washed, so you kind of get the uh, the feeling of okay, this is going to be something that's going to that I'm going to have to read and get mad about. You know, <laughs> it wasn't like that. It had a good it was a good twist in it. You know, but uh, it, it worked well um, and it converted very high as well, just because it was a good. These things worked well together. Um, this is another one where I'm just using a clear benefit in here. So it was one concept, and I made better decisions because of it. Um, the image was hard for me to find. It took me like an hour to find this image, if I'm going to be honest. But I finally found one. I was like, oh, that kind of looks like somebody's needed to make a decision. And uh, it converted well. Uh, it was another good post. Um, the title did really well for us. So, yes? Where do you typically get your images from? Uh, Unsplash.com. Unsplash.com. Yep, that's where I get most of mine from, yeah. Um, this one was did really well. I, I, how to stop stressing about the future would have been fine by itself, but it was right before the new year, so I, this will help you in 2018. So I kind of used a how-to with a uh, with something that was like a promised outcome, I guess you could say, uh, along with it. Um, and then the image was just something with time, uh, which I always find gives people the sense of urgency whenever you have anything with a clock or anything like that in it. In the mind, it's just kind of like, all right, this is an urgent thing. I should read before the new year hits. So and it was a post that was about like not stressing about the future anymore, and it was another one that worked really well. So. Those are just four examples of actually seeing all everything I've talked about in action here. So, so a picture ain't worth a thousand words, but the right words are priceless. So your image is going to give you the right words, and it's, or it's going to be worth a thousand words. Again, it really help people get there, but having the right title is worth way more than that. The image is only going to slow someone down to actually look to see what the rest of what you have to say is. So this is an example from WordPress.com. Um, we use WordPress.org, but we're connected through Jetpack.com, so our posts get shared there. So this was on this, the day I looked this up to make this, that post on um, over here, whatever side that is for all you guys, left, yeah. Um, that post was actually the most recent one that got um, submitted on Daily PS. Um, so I just typed in stop criticizing in, uh, in, Je- in, in WordPress.com to see what came up. And uh, that was the first post that came up under relevant. So it, it had gotten 20 likes pretty quick. Um, but if you look at it, it's got a nice image. It's got a good title and a good description along with an author image and some tags. It worked really well. So I just kind of took a screenshot of that real quick and I clicked over to most recent without changing the search at all and I found blog post four um, on the same topic. Now, if these were the two posts that went live at the same time on the same talk about, about not criticizing anymore, which one are you likely going to click? You're going to click the one that actually makes a little bit more sense, right? Um, that's an example of what we need to be thinking about when we're blogging. We've got to make sure, or writing any sort of content, you want to make sure that you're making it so people that are reading it are going to click yours versus somebody else's. So, and then, not that likes are super important, but one had 20, one had one. It's probably the guy who wrote it who liked it, who knows? Um, no judgment there, that's cool, I, I would do it too. Um, so that's just a good way to see that it's really important to make sure that we're putting a lot of time and effort into this. Any questions? Cool, all right. So now getting into the content edit, this is this is where like the fun really starts, I believe. So um, 
I, I like to use a framework. Uh, again, being like a structured person, I like to have a good idea of where I'm, uh, where I'm going with my my content and what I want it to be kind of formed like. So I often use this one. I put it right in there. I've got my title, my lead paragraph, my image, uh, my experience on the topic, um, any points. I like to do bullet points, um, a list with numbers, things like that, and my conclusion at the end. Um, that's the way I like to write. It's not the way you necessarily need to. Um, you can actually Google and do a lot of research on different frameworks for writing content. Um, this one works well for me. I don't always use it. There's other times I'll use something way simpler. But uh, that's normally what I end up going with. Um, right along with that, when you're editing your content, do all your research. Um, for me, when I'm doing a, a quick my draft initially, I'll write down some, some stats that I think are right. You know, I think I've heard them before. But this is when you want to go back and really like do that research to make sure you're not misinformed or wrong. You don't want to be a fake news person, yes. Could you just repeat those steps again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have my title, and then my lead paragraph, uh, my featured image, my experience on the topic, and then my points, which are usually bullet points or a list of numbers, and then my conclusion at the end. Yep, come on. Um, yeah, so I'm saying make sure you're researching the topic you're writing about. Uh, that's a really important thing to do. Uh, make every word in every sentence count. Uh, I know that Google does award longer content at times where you have uh, over 1,500 words, 1,500 or 2,000 seem to really do well. Um, most of my posts don't ever reach that length. Uh, I just don't have enough to say sometimes. <laughs> um, and I don't want to have filler in there. I want to make sure that every word I'm using is important. I want to make sure that it's all going to really help somebody, it's going to benefit, and it's going to be a good, well-written sentence. Um, so make sure you're really doing that. The way I always like to say it is uh, all buff and no fluff. It sounds pretty good, right? You know, it's good. It's stuck in my brain, so I use it. Um, it's important to go ahead and proofread your content as well. Um, run it through uh, uh, Apple Pages, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, Apple Pages. Is that really what it's called? Is that what you guys edit, use it on Apple? No, nobody knows. What do you guys use to proofread on Apple? So Pages Grammarly. Is, Grammarly? Grammarly. Yeah. Grammarly. But Apple doesn't have like a native like... So, so Pages is here? the like Mac equivalent to Word. Okay, cool. All right, that's... All right, so so you, you would sure. write it in Word okay. or write it in Pages. Gotcha. And then you run through Grammarly to make sure. I know I'm using an Apple English. today, thanks to this guy, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm usually Windows, so I had no idea what you guys use. But uh, anyway, Grammarly can design anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then so I, I always run it through Microsoft Word first. That's the first thing I do. That's where I usually end up writing it, and then I go straight over to HemingwayApp.com is my next place I go to, and then I also go to Grammarly are the places that I go to actually edit uh, my content. Um, they all catch very different things, and they're really good. It's enough Grammarly integrates with Word. Does it really? So you can kill two words. Really? Good to know. Okay. Learn something new. I love that. All right. Thank you. That's cool. Um, and then the last thing that's super important, have somebody read your content before publishing. Um, there's some things that will never, like the human eyes can be the only thing that catches it. Perfect example is I wrote a blog post recently. Um, I thought it was really good. I felt like I didn't need someone else to read it. I was so confident in it. Um, I messed up in the title. Um, and I got a text message from my grandmother, is the one who told me. <laughs> 15 minutes I wrote, she goes, great article, Alex, but you didn't need an apostrophe here. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And that's what I get for not having somebody read, you know? <laughs> 15 minutes later, so that was pretty funny. Um, anyway, so make sure you're having somebody kind of give you some honest feedback and, and welcome that honest feedback. So for me, uh, my wife is my normal, oh, I'm so sorry. My wife is my normal uh, editor. She'll kind of take a look at it, and I've given her open, like, give me honest feedback. Even if it's going to hurt my feelings, go ahead and give it to me. I'm not going to like say anything about it. Um, sometimes, and she's she's a good writer, honestly. She'll say, "Hey, this entire paragraph doesn't need to be in here." And you know, immediately I'm like offended. I'm like, "What are you talking about? I spent so much time on that. You know, I don't actually voice that, or she would never edit for me again." But um, so as she's editing, sometimes she'll, and I, I kind of pull myself out of the equation because I wrote it, so I'm emotionally attached to it. I'll read it, and I'm like, "Oh, you're right. I don't need that in there." Uh, and recently I pulled a whole paragraph out and was able to get into a whole other section of the post. I wasn't, it was just too long to add anything else at that point, but I pulled out something that wasn't needed and I was add, able to add something that added a lot of value. So having somebody else read it and give honest feedback is a huge deal with that. Um, also, kind of before I, I move on to this next part, I didn't write this one down, but um, Google actually has a preferred voice that you can write with that's actually going to rank higher. Um, people have all kinds of different names for it. Um, a passive voice is a no-go. They want something that's current, that's active. But also they look for two main things, I've, uh, just in my own research I've found. They look for authority and transparency in your voice. Uh, authority to me just means that you're not using words like perhaps, maybe, could be. Anything that's not confident shows it, to Google, shows that you don't have authority on that topic because you, you just think that maybe this is the way it goes or perhaps this would work. 
If you're somebody that has authority and knows the answer, Google's going to rank that higher. Um, and also transparency. Google does not want it to be something that is just like a robot talking. They want it to be like, what's your story? Why do you know this? What's the emotion behind it? It's strange that they have an algorithm that can actually identify emotion and identify that you're, you're actually being transparent about yourself, but it seems to work. So you've never gone to Google and found an answer to a question with somebody saying, I think that it's probably this. That's never the first thing that comes up. It's always someone, this is the answer you're looking for right here. And that's what Google rank, ranks a lot higher. So, yes? I wanted to comment back on the reading the content. Yeah. You, and one thing that has worked for me is if you don't have someone readily available and you're eager to publish that content, reading it out loud in front of a mirror oh, yeah. will it, surprisingly, you that know. Sounds super scary. <laughs> it sounds super scary. It sounds super scary. But it works. It works. You catch a lot of stuff. That's a good idea. I Very cool. I ate too much at dinner. <laughs> well, also my Mac, I just have my Mac read it back to me also. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's another good idea. And, uh, you hear, like you said, you hear it from the things and even the voice and things like So I usually do that also. That's a good idea. Cool idea. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to implement the at least the, the mirror one. I'm not excited about it, but I'm going to implement it. I don't know if my, my computer reads back to me out of Windows again, but we'll see. That, cool idea, so thank you. That's really cool. All right, so this, this kind of last piece of the puzzle here is the, the content, the actual format of it. Um, this is the part that many of us um, kind of have the desire to skip maybe, because at this point, if you've written a great blog post and you've got a great image, great title, all that, great description to go with it, you're kind of like, all right, I'm ready to get this thing out there. But we cannot skip out on the actual formatting of the post. It's very important, becoming more important than ever before, I'd say. Um, formatting can be as simple as us using all the native features to WordPress, where you're just using the, uh, the H fonts, um, your quotations, bold, underline, different color text, numbers, bullets, anything like that, they're going to make it kind of break up and not just look like a bunch of words on a page. Um, and so you want to kind of break up paragraphs wherever you can. You want to not have long paragraphs. The shorter they are, um, the better, because people will actually read them a lot more. Um, all of us grew up in a place where we, in school, you were taught like a, a proper uh, paragraph is at least, you know, three to five sentences at least type of thing. And if you were in school and you did a one sentence paragraph, you're going to get, that's going to get you in trouble, you know, but it's not the same on the internet. Um, one word or even, or sorry, one sentence paragraphs are acceptable and even should be used at times, I believe. Um, along with that, like, you, you want to make sure and break it up all you can. A good way to do this for me is always add your internal and external links somewhere within. So I'll kind of be uh, writing my post and I'll kind of go into a topic that that maybe is just uh, kind of relevant to what I'm writing about, and right under that I'll break up a paragraph even and put in the middle of it related posts and something that has to do with that topic. To just kind of be a call to action for people, but also breaks up the text a lot. Um, Neil Patel actually shared this stat recently, 79% of your audience will only scan your content. So you need to create scannable content. What that means is, uh, and I'm guilty of it as well, I'll be honest, I'm a scanner. Uh, when I see a real long piece of text without them to break it up, I'll kind of just skim through that one real quick and move down to the next thing. People that do really well with scannable content, though, they've created these um, sections that have, um, you know, they're using their H1, H2 fonts or a different color with like a really strong sentence or statement. And oftentimes what I'll do, I'll read it and I'll be like, oh, wow, that's, that's good. I'm going to go back up and read what was right before that. What, what led to this point? And it causes me to kind of go back and read a full post. And that's a really important uh, thing to be able to do with it as well. And again, that's 79% of people. That's a lot. You'll tell as a, as a, like, kind of a, guru in the marketing world, so like, I completely trust that stat that he has there. Um, another great way to, to do this is to insert quotables, and I'll explain what that is in just a minute here. Uh, if, if adding those within your copy. I actually got this advice from Lika, Lisa Turkers. Um, anyone who's not familiar with her, she owns a company called Proverbs 31 Ministries. She might be one of the most influential women in the world of writing uh, today, um, and she's absolutely a genius. I had no idea. I, I ended up there by accident. I was in the same room as her and listening to her talk and just kind of share how she's written books. She's a New York Times best-selling author, has been many times, and um, she credits all of it to these things, which she calls quotables. Um, so an example of what a quotable is, it's a strong, engaging, standalone sentence, and it's what people highlight in books. Obviously, most people aren't highlighting the text we're talking about in our blog posts or on content, but if you kind of put a way that it's separate, that people can see it, it's a really good way to do it. So she shared this, this really, what I thought most interesting is that almost 100% of best-selling books have these quotables on every other page. And what she kind of, her point of it was, people aren't reading the whole, they're, they're reading the whole book, but what they're looking for is something to highlight along the way. It's what keeps them engaged and keeps them going. When people, she actually said this quote, and I think I wrote down here, yeah, when people stop highlighting, they stop reading. It's really true, if you ever read a book that's just like a tough read, 
if you don't have that mental break of, wow, I'm gonna highlight this, this is really good, I'm gonna remember this, it's hard to keep on going. So we need to have that somewhere within our, uh, within our, our posts that we're doing, our content. Um, publications aren't what change lives, it's the strong sentences within them. So we gotta remember that everything that we're writing has gotta be about that strong sentence somewhere within it. Um, and then uh, she had this thing where she was someone making it poetic or easy to read. I am by no means, a, I don't know how to make any words rhyme together. And uh, so uh, that didn't work well for me, but I can make things that are fairly easy to remember or to read. So um, that's a good point for everybody just to remember and think about as, as you're writing. Um, and here's an example of that. Formatting is like the icing on the cake, and no one likes cake without icing. Did you go back just Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Yep, and like I said, I got these slides available, so it will, oh, okay. you can get them at the end as well. But yeah, feel free to write on that. Anybody have any questions on this? I know I, I talk really fast, I know. But is there, anybody have any questions or anything like that? Yes, ma'am. What was the author's name again? Lisa Turkers. Um, I had somewhere on there. The, the, um, the, the lady said that, right? I think it's pretty slide you had it on there. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Yes. Get down to the bottom here. Prayer. L Y S A T E R K E U R S T. She spelled her name wrong. Her mom spelled her name wrong, I guess. But I'm not gonna say anything. I thought we said it's not. All right. So again, going on this next section here. Um, so no one likes cake without icing. It's true, right? Um, you want to. The goal of all of our formatting is make it pleasing to the eye. You want people when they read your post. Um, something I do when I know I'm short for time is I will scan an entire post before I read a single word on it. I want to see how long it is, uh, if it's going to be a lot, a big commitment basically on a short amount of time I have. Um, yes? Huh? Oh. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the thing that I found with this is like I'll, I'll go through and scan it. If it's just a bunch of paragraphs, even if it's like three or four paragraphs, there's nothing to break it up. For me, it feels like a bigger commitment than a longer post. It's very broken up well. It has like a lot of nice colors and stuff in it. It seems like less of a commitment. So that's something just to think about while, while you're doing that. So, yes? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I, no, good. I was just wondering, I see in a lot of blog posts that people are like doing a, a picture at the top and then a picture in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, several pictures throughout. You might just have paragraph, picture, paragraph, picture. What's your opinion on that? I think I think it's a really good a good thing to do. I don't do a whole lot of it. I don't again. I'm not super image heavy on what I do, but I do think that it breaks it up for the human eye again because it's a break. Yes. On that, I um, I do certain posts where it's one of those picture image, picture image, but it varies by the post. In my case, it's more of a picture image. Mm -hmm. Where it's like it's important, or if there's something step by step, or if there's something relevant, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't do images every other paragraph just for the sake of having them. If it's, if it's a fluid read, it ends up being more instructive. True. Yeah, that is, that is right. Yeah. That's good feedback. Anybody else? All right. So just to kind of to, to recap here, we covered our content draft is the first piece, and then our title and then a description, uh, featured image, the content edit that you're doing, and then the content format. And these are five steps I believe they really do help and make a huge difference in the world of uh, in the world of blogging. Um, it really is what kind of has helped me to stand out. I've gotten a lot of traffic over the years. And I say it with all humility. I've put a lot of time and effort into it, so it's, it's cool to see some, some benefits come from it. So a uh, word of encouragement for everybody, if you don't see an immediate change in action uh, in your traffic, even if you apply all this, seriously, don't give up. If you're writing something that's helpful to the world or answering a question or just adding value, don't stop. Um, it, it's not worth it to, to stop just because you're not getting a whole lot of traffic. The truth is some of us may never, but if we're doing something we know is adding value and it's, it's changing a life, it's worth it. Uh, this last quote here is something I say to my team on Daily PS a lot. I say this to, there's 70 authors, I say it almost every, I send them a video every week. I say it almost every week. Um, if your blog post helped one person, it was worth it. Do for one what you wish you could do for all. So for all of us, that's the encouragement I want to give. Whatever you're writing, if it really is going to change a life and help somebody, make sure that you remember that. It's, if it's for one person, if it only helps one person, it was worthwhile. So that's a, a big important thing in all, in all this, just to just remember. I want to encourage you guys with that. I, mean, I know it's, it's tough out there. Sometimes you write, you pour your heart into something you feel like only a few people saw it. Just remember, it, it truly is worth it still. Um, so that's, that's it. Um, my website, alexsanfilippo.com slash wc-jacks. You can get a copy of the slides. Um, I wrote an SEO ebook. It's only 20 pages. It's for beginners. It's extremely simple, very basic. We had some SEO talks here that were great. I want to go back and revise this book, but I'm not going to right now. Um, but I'm giving that away along with that headlines ebook I talked about. 
And then if anybody wants to do any sort of coaching session, I love to give back to this WordPress community. I've gotten so much from this community. People learn so much. Um, anything I do to give back, I'm, I'm happy with. So there's a link on there that has access to my calendar. You can literally reserve your own 30 minute slot and I'm not charging for that. We can just kind of talk about your blog posts or any business ideas you have. I love doing marketing and stuff as well. So again, my desire is just to help this community of people. I love what WordPress has done for me and I'm excited to get back wherever I can. So um, anyway, that's it. Does anyone have any questions or anything like that? Yes. Um, do you have any insight on frequency? How, how often do you post? Uh, it, like actually, it's Monday through Friday. Oh, so we do Monday through Friday on there. I post once a month, but once there's a different a author who writes every day, yeah. Yep. Um, I think if you really are a serious blogger, three times, two to three times a week is ideal. Um, that's a lot. I do every other week on my own personal one. So, anyway, uh, time's actually up, so I'll take more questions. But I want to be able to dismiss. So thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate it.